Hey everybody, Steve Kozar here. I've got my brand new watercolor painting, uh, Rainy Street Scene in Paris. And I'm just standing here, or actually sitting here with my iPhone, and I thought I would make a quick video and uh, zoom in so you can see the detail, which is hard to do with a still photograph. Just to give you an idea, this painting is roughly 11 by 11 inches. There's me with my hand and a paintbrush to show you the sense of scale. It's not a large painting by any means. But for me, I don't usually go much bigger than this because I take so long as it is. So let's do this. Let's zoom in. And you can really see some of the crazy detail work that I like to do. Sorry, my hand isn't that... Now here I'll show you again. There's a paintbrush, there's my hand. You can see how tiny these little things are. It's a lot more steady when I use both hands holding onto the, uh, the iPhone. This is a scene in Paris that I photographed two summers ago, 2016. I was running around like crazy with my non-waterproof camera. I had no raincoat or umbrella. I didn't know it was going to rain, but I was having the time of my life. I was running around taking pictures, hoping that my camera would last long enough, even if it got wet, that I could get the pictures I needed for this once-in-a-lifetime trip that I was on. Well, I hope it's not a once-in-a-lifetime. I want to go back, but I was only there for a few days. The hardest part of the painting was really the whole thing. There wasn't very much about this painting that was easy. But I would say the hardest part was getting all these cobblestones. And if you'll notice, there's artificial light here, and especially these spotlights here, and those were shining down on the cobblestone, creating some warm reflections, but most of the reflections are in the middle, and that's coming from the much cooler sky. This is obviously a cloudy time where it's close to dusk, and the light coming from the sky is a very cool, neutral sort of a, a light, very soft, whereas the warm light from the, from the artificial lights creates a completely different color to whatever it touches. So, um, in general, I'm always thinking about the lighting, and I'm thinking about is this dark enough or light enough, I'm thinking about values, and then I'm thinking about is this warm or cool, or is it too warm or too cool? So those are the categories I tend to think in. And this composition gave me a real opportunity to demonstrate both the effect of natural light and artificial light and lots of different lighting situations, a lot of different textures. The uh, menu over here, I did not use gouache, I did not paint the letters. I painted around what appear to be letters with the darkest paint. And it was in French. I don't even know what it said. And the, and the photograph wasn't even clear enough anyway. So I just made it look like general letters. Obviously, the letters that are bigger there, you can, you can make those out. And um, I don't do a lot of work with people, and I really enjoy doing that. And I liked this piece because the people were uh, particular. They were real people, but no, nobody's face was very prominent. Even this guy, you only see about a third of his face and he's not looking at the viewer, at, at us. And I, I don't like having people that look at you unless that is the focus point. And I consider myself more of a landscape artist. So people are there to give it a sense of scale and to help you uh, have a sense of what it would be like if you were there. It helps to put you in the picture. You can kind of imagine yourself. But the people are not the focus. That would be a, a completely different painting, which is fine. That's just not what I was trying to do here. Again, uh, going back to the issue of gouache or opaque watercolor. I didn't use hardly any at all except for on this part of the building. This part of the building was obviously much more recently constructed, this facade, and it had that kind of a pastel look to it. And I didn't want to do it with just transparent watercolor because it looked too grainy and I couldn't get that pastel look. So I used very thin layers of gouache. And I really love the way there's this artificial light coming from inside the building reflecting on the outside as well as these little spotlights hitting on top. And there's another spotlight out of view here creating these shadows here. Um, I basically paint around the lights. I don't use opaque um, watercolor or, or, or gouache. I just left this area here unpainted where the, where the light would be and I gradually just stippled around it. So uh, I didn't use airbrush. Um, I didn't really need to very much for anything here. It, it would be okay to use it a little bit here and there if I had to, but I, I'm kind of fussy. I don't really like the airbrush. It bothers me. So uh, sometimes I do. Most of the time I don't. Occasionally I will use gouache. I don't care 
about the so-called rules about when you should or shouldn't use gouache. I just want to make a good painting. And in this painting, it's, uh, it's I don't know, 90% transparent watercolor with a little bit of gouache, which is fine with me. The end result is all I really care about. Hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm going to zoom back out again. There we go. And I hope to make some more videos soon. If not, sorry, it's just that I'm so busy doing other stuff. But I will do as many as I can as soon as I can. And I'm really glad that you enjoy these. And I hope to talk to you again soon.